Hello. I Sana, I we can't hear you, your your moment. Yeah. Hi. Hello, welcome. All right, so just, just a quick reminder what this call is about. So every two weeks we get together to talk about a lab experiment that we are doing on the site. Uh, the, the core product team is working on the core product, improving and et cetera. And a very small, very, very small, tiny part of the team. We are uh, just exploring how we can make UpCoach uh extendable by third-party developers by other developers so coaches can hire developers to build to let them build uh their own unique coaching solutions and tools on top of up coach uh so in order for in order to do that we decided to build some custom apps so we uh see the scenario uh, what requirements do we have and uh, and step by step build those things. So in today's call, basically, I will uh, take you through what we have shipped so far uh, as part of this experiment and then what we are planning to do what we are planning to do next. So welcome everyone. Hey Denny. So let me start with um, what we have shipped so far. By the way, please don't hesitate to just stop me and ask questions. Uh, you can ask anything and I will do my best to answer your questions. All right, so what we have shipped so far uh, with custom apps. The first part of this is the core product. In order to build custom apps on AppCoach, we needed an API for these apps, right? We built that. And then uh, on the organization admin area, we built a small uh, utility to let organization admins manage installed apps, uninstall them or go to their settings, manage their settings. And also we introduced a, a very simple uh, installation flow, which we will be enhancing and improving soon. And also we introduced uh, a custom block frame for programs. So these custom apps can introduce uh, their own blocks for programs, which coaches can utilize in their uh, coaching programs. And we also developed a developer portal which um, actually, let me show it to you. Yeah. So this developer, with, with, with this developer, uh, developers who are part of this development problem uh, program, uh, they can manage their own apps. Uh, customize their settings, create new apps, create new blocks inside this, these uh, apps and et cetera. So this is a complete fully functioning developer portal where everything um, developers can sign up, create their teams and publish applications basically. And they can invite other developers to their teams. They can share apps and blocks with organ coaching organizations on the platform. And uh, the, of course, there are some uh, permission levels, uh, roles for these invited developers to teams. And uh, this, is, this is the developer portal and it's like um, fully functional right now. We published the Wheel of Life application, Lifeline application and Stripe Blink portal. And these three apps providing three blocks, Wheel of Life chart, Lifeline chart and Stripe Blink portal. And we are still working on the wiki app to uh, improve the extension points and APS, which I will 
touch next. So in addition to this developer portal, we also developed uh, a package for a software development framework called Laravel. With this package, it's like super easy to get started with developing apps on AppCoach platform. It provides installation and webhook management middleware for AppCoach requests. Uh, it has an apps API client. Uh, it has a developer mode for testing. And um, also it has a beautiful AppCoach request simulator, which makes it really fast to develop apps without going back and forth between AppCoach host environment and your local environment. And, and then we also introduced a Laravel app coach app template, repository app template on GitHub, which takes it a, one step further to start developing apps. And we introduced, we, we uh, basically introduced uh, the backend for the documentation system we will be using for publishing documents for developers so they can get to know uh, how it works, how it gets together, and etc. And then <clears throat> on top of all these, we shipped three apps, custom apps. The first one was Wheel of Life, and it reached already 315 installations. This is, I think this is a really great achievement uh, because we don't have any promotions around. We don't have a marketplace yet. The only platform that we uh, spread the word is via our community uh, learn organization. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see these numbers. And also for the Lifeline app, we uh, deployed, it's already reached uh, 200 installs. Uh, we have Stripe Blink Portal app deployed, but to be honest, we forgot to announce this on, on the forum. So we will uh, post the announcement so you can start using this also. And then we have the Wiki application in progress. So far, this is what we've shipped from the beginning. Uh, any questions so far? All right, cool. So that's all good progress, but now why, what we are working on. Uh, so we think that it's time for us to bring third-party developers to our platform. We have the necessary packages, templates, and tools in place, which we already tested with three uh, custom apps. So we think that we are ready to bring uh, better this, this platform uh, for third-party developers. So uh, in the next few weeks, we will be complete writing our full documentation and publishing it. And then we will also create a community for developers on our own platform, of course. We will have a forum where developers will be able to ask questions and help each other and then we will have a few courses. We already planned a few of them to get started with developing apps on AppCoach. And we will also have several events and live streams scheduled for uh, live streaming the development uh, process. And also we will be organizing a few hackathons. Uh, it would be awesome to have a few coaches too on those hackathons so we can brainstorm new ideas and see what we can do, but we still have a little bit time for that. And then uh, for, for additional apps, uh, we, will, uh, we will continue working on the Wiki application. Wiki application is very important for us because basically we are, it allows us to introduce some new extension points in our custom uh, app platform. First of all, we want, you know that we, we a few weeks ago or months ago, uh, we introduced search functionality. So we want these custom apps to index their own content in our search platform. 
So we will be introducing that. And also we want these apps to open full screen view of their assets. For example, in a wiki app context, an article uh, being displayed full screen, just like this agenda, you know, the header area, but this area is fully occupied by the wiki article and it's all other interactions, but you can go back to your program. So uh, this will also introduce a routing extension opportunity for us. And for the wheel of life, uh, we have, uh, I forgot to list it here, but the first thing is that we will be introducing uh, subcategories for wheel of life categories. So you can uh, create more detailed wheel of lives, but uh, we will also introduce program reporting extension. So right now we have introduced a new program report section with the first report as last seen report. So we want to allow custom apps to create their own program reports. And we think that Wheel of Life is one of the best candidates for this. So in this uh, Wheel of Life report, you will be able to see all your program members' Wheel of Lives and compare to each other on a single screen. You don't have to switch between users and et cetera. So we'll see how that goes. And then right now, all these custom apps and block settings are not that intuitive. We want to have them behave like the native blocks and native uh, tools inside the platform. So we will be also working on it. And then this is, I'm really excited about it. Uh, the, an expert directory where we list um, some developers from our developer platform. So you can uh, get in touch with them, maybe even hire them to do some extra custom work or bring your own tools, uh, own unique tools to up coach and spread the word, you know, or even share those tools with other coaches on up coach. So yeah, this is also what's cooking. Any questions? or any ideas or anything that you want to share? All right, so yeah, these, these are uh, the to two topics that I'd like to talk about this week. And just as, as a, another reminder, this is the building blocks call where we like to talk about custom apps, building custom apps, or you sharing ideas or your custom requirements which we may uh, choose to build as a custom app so we can also improve the ecosystem. And, uh, and once in every month, we also have an open product call where you can uh, share your feedback issues, share your issues or your share your inspirations about the core product itself, which we had uh, this uh, yesterday. So let me know if you have any ideas to share anything at all? All right, if, does anyone have any specific like ideas for unique coaching tools that something that something can be developed and listed in the marketplace, maybe? I've, I've got something. Awesome. Bring it on, James. All right. Hey, um, thanks for doing these. My, I, I ran into a little issue that um, I think could be fixed with maybe a building block, or I don't know if it'd be a building block, but um, when I take somebody through my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, what I do is I, I have each of my sessions set up um, for the pre-work for, the, for them preparing for that in a course. Um, and so throughout that course, it would be really cool if we could, uh, when I open up the, um, the course lesson for that individual, um, then, or, or that group, that program, then I could have kind of a hidden agenda that would then automatically, um, go into the next session or event. So I don't have to every time go through and like copy and paste an agenda item, like 12 agenda items. I could just have it automatically when they open that, then the next session would have all the agenda items that we're going to talk about 
based off of what they just went through, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So uh, this is interesting. So when you're designing your course, uh, just like adding text blogs, video blogs to your lessons, you also want to add private notes. And yes. when those courses started or your clients are progressing through those courses, you want to grab those private notes and show it inside the agenda. Am I correct? That's right. Yeah. And and maybe even, I mean, even on top of that, I think I mentioned this in a previous call of having private notes that just the coaches would be able to see. Um, mm-hmm. So when through it, we would have like, eventually I'd like to hire some additional coaches um, but if I could put inside of the course or inside of anything, the agenda or whatever, um, private notes that only the coaches could see, um, especially inside of the smart docs where they could, um, as they're walking somebody through, they could have their own set of instructions that are not visible to the the mm-hmm. client, but they can see it themselves. But um, on, on top of that, having hidden agenda items that would then just sync over to a session. Mm-hmm. because. I- eight session um, uh, one-on-one coaching program that we take people through. And so every time I open up a new course um, or a new lesson for them, that's preparing them for my next uh, one-on-one session that I do. And then being able to attach an agenda to that immediately or automatically mm. uh, would be super helpful. One question, James. So sure. here on this call, as you see, we have also an agenda, right? And Mm -hmm. while I'm talking to all of you, I'm also sharing my screen, sharing the agenda view. And this is my view. I'm logged in as an admin in this case, and you're seeing my screen. So what do you think, how would it behave in this scenario? Because if I see this private notes here and I'm sharing my screen to my clients, then they would also see those hidden notes while I, yeah. I'm sharing my uh, screen. That's where at the top of each block, I think if there was a um, an option to toggle on and off uh, oh. coach note. Or, um, or even on the sidebar or somewhere here, like hide all private blocks, something like, and then yeah. it automatically all private or screen sharing mode. Yeah. If you toggle yep. on, hey, I'm sharing, if you tell the system that you're sharing your screen, then it becomes uh, all those things hidden. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and a little bit more um, explanation on the agenda. Like if, if that the agenda, if I could have multiple agenda items that just carried over as topics, um, I, I keep calling them agenda, but um, it's more so like topics that I could mark off as I go along, along mm-hmm. the way. Mm. Yeah. So uh, regarding the link between, sorry if I'm asking too many questions, but I'm trying to understand I, the the uh, how this works and the real use case behind it. So the, the core of the idea is that you have an agenda with your client and you want to get some items added automatically to this agenda as a topic from mm-hmm. courses, their, the current lesson that they are in or from their smart documents or whatever they are doing on the platform, it depends. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, sim- similar to um, tasks because we can now put in tasks and then those True. will carry into the program. Um, but the same idea as a topic. So mm-hmm. um, that way, because what I'm finding is as I, I onboard more and more clients, there's a lot of back and forth that I have to go and build each agenda um, and maybe even a, another fix instead of that, like if that was not able to fix work in between is to have um, template topics be like session one topics um, mm. and automatically in, input those. Um, another thought I thought was like I, I could have a list of my topics and copy and paste them, but I would have to do that like multiple times for each topic. But if there was a, a line break, if I paste it into one topic and there's a line break, it would just create multiple topics. It's, it's, actually, it's actually kind of like an automation, right? When your yep. client progresses through the course, if they complete the lesson seven, add these topics to the agenda. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and that actually brings me to the idea of having automation blocks inside of the courses and, and things that um, 
instead of because there there is and i haven't played with it much but there is some some automation um that that you guys already do but if you take and and pull over an automation block into um, a lesson or into a smart doc and say when when this thing happens in this course then i can send this email or i could add this mm-hmm. um add this topic to the agenda or whatever it be and so the automation happens because because when we're building out our courses we're looking at it and being like oh it'd be so cool if as soon as they finish this then that happens but right now the automation is completely separate from that um from that building process yeah. and and i haven't found that it's as um granular and so like if they finish this yeah. lesson or or whatnot so um even even if it was a setting within all of the other blocks like uh, let's say there's a task block. So you have the task and there's a, an automation setting in there. Oh, do you want to add an automation to this? Yes. When they mark this off, I want to send them a congratulations. Or um, when they finish this lesson, I want, I want an email to go out to both of us and uh, letting, letting us both know that they've finished that or that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah, there are, th- this is, this is interesting. There are two approaches to automation um so james so the first thing is the local automation and then the global automation both have their ins and outs and of course the best scenario the best scenario would be to have the best of both worlds but it's really hard to tackle but here's yeah. how it works the, the local automation is exactly like how you described it right so you you are on your program you already designed and implemented your program and you have a tasks block in there so you just set up your task automation in there uh, exactly where it makes sense the most. So you say that, as you suggested, uh, when my client in this program, in this task block, completes a task, send them a congratulations message or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so this is the local automation. This is nice, but this brings, this has one downside and it's pretty big. So let's say that you have three programs or four programs, yeah. and then you have all these local automations set up in your programs, right? And then suddenly your clients started complaining that, hey, I'm receiving many messages or you know, lots of things going on, uh, triggering many actions and et cetera, and you mm-hmm. want to change things around, right? So where do you see all this happening like you have to go in I, where where did i where have i set up that where was it and etc it's all scattered around and too many things happening everywhere uh this is the downside of it uh and on the contrary the global automation setup you have a single place the automation workflows you create workflows which you can manage from single place by the way i'm not defending any approaches yet yeah uh so the the global in the global automation setup you have a workflow management you create workflows and you say that hey uh i want to have a congratulations workflow you create the workflow and you say that any pro any programs that this workflow is enabled on uh, whenever a client completes a task, send them this message. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now the downside is that your program is here, your workflow is here. So you have to go to the program and then go to the workflow designer and go back to the program designer. It's like two separate things. But right. the, the, the upside is that you can turn on and off all these automations from a singular place and easily manage uh and design or alter them right and so maybe maybe there's a way to um have uh the first one that you talked about i don't remember how you how you named it but um on local. the individual level, the local yeah. yeah yeah so have the local every time a local one is made um uh in the back end there's probably going to be a list of different automations maybe that could be just put into a single single place every time we make one in course one there's a, a list of um, automations that just display. These are all the automations you have out, outside in all of your surrounding courses. And then when you click into that, um, even if you can't edit it right there, maybe it'll take you directly to that, um, mm-hmm. that place and be able to edit it. 
Yeah, and on the on the workflow manager where you can see all the workflows, maybe you can, we can list uh, the assigned entities like, hey, for this workflow, you assign this workflow to this course, this program, and this and this. So you can see them in one place, but also on the local level. When you go to the program, you see that, hey, on this program, this workflow is turned on. So yes. uh, if you click on it, maybe it takes you to the workflow designer or uh, whatever. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, we are going a little bit out of scope right now. <laughs> Like we started with the blocks, but now we are talking about a workflow of designer automation, etc. But I love it, uh, <laughs> and in taking already took uh, many notes here. Um, in and thank you, thank you for sharing this, James. So yeah. if, if if we, I'm I'm thinking, how can we have some easy wins uh, with with, with the custom blocks right now. So here's what we have. So, okay, let's first, uh, let's first uh, go through what do we have and let, then let's think about what we can make out of those things, all right? So we have an API. We have a public API. This public a API basically allows us to uh, create tasks. So with Zapier, for example, you can create tasks on your programs for your clients. Basically, uh, based on an, an external trigger, you can create and assign tasks to your clients. And with our also with our API, we can uh, create new clients, add them to programs, create new programs from templates, and uh, yeah, that's 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 it. So we can uh, so for automation, this is this right now we are not talking about this private hidden thing. I think we are now switched to the automation scope. So um, what we can, if if we can create tasks with an API, these custom blocks can also create tasks with an API, with the API, all right? So what we can do is we can create an automation block, all right? Automation block. So you drag and drop this uh, block to your program, right? And uh, we can have some basic triggers like we can listen for task events. We can listen for specific events, course progress, lesson status changes, lesson completion, and etc. This block can listen for those events and it can take some actions, predefined actions, maybe some sending message, sending a notification, and or adding those members to other programs creating a new program or adding them to those programs. Now, just thinking a lot, you know, like uh, a lot. Um, we, can, we can have an easy win with this kind of thing, but I'm not sure if it would be useful enough for this scenario. Uh, we can add topics to the selected agendas on the program. Would this be helpful? What do you think? Yeah, my my only worry is I, I guess that you would have to filter that through whether or not something has been accomplished in um, a course. And then if I'm thinking that through correctly, like and then um, if if this is done, then add these topics to the the next available agenda. Mm. So I don't know. First, yeah, so first a clarification. In my opinion, and this is the team's opinion also, I'm pretty sure, the automation is a core feature, all right? So it will be done and it will be done inside the core product. So I don't want to focus on building a full-fledged automation inside the custom block. No, so what we are doing here is, you know, like we, so we are trying to catch two birds with one stone. 
Uh, yeah. The first one is that let's see if we can build some really cool custom stuff for our lovely users, lovely uh, customers, coaches. And the second thing we want to accomplish is while we are doing that, let's see if we can uh, enhance and improve the custom app ecosystem uh, at the same time. So uh, we can build some cool stuff and we can also, by, by improving the ecosystem, the extension points, we can also allow the third party developers to build cool stuff too, not just us, right? So we, we don't become blockers. So we enable everyone to build these cool stuff. So I really like to keep the scope with these custom apps to minimum. And I, I'm searching for some really easy wins and hitting these two birds at the same time. But I think this automation is a bigger topic, but I think there's also an opportunity here. If we can keep the scope really small, it also brings uh, great en enhancements to the extension points, like listening for events happening on the platform and acting based on those events. So these custom apps do uh, their custom reporting, can do their custom reporting, can do um, some ad more advanced uh, activities maybe, I don't know, just thinking. And this combined with the hidden agenda topics or not hidden, like adding agenda topics to the uh, meeting topics to agenda based on some activity, I think this can be combined in a uh, very small scoped custom block maybe. Yeah. I hope you don't mind me if I am going too deep into technical details and etc. but you know, like this is kind of, that's that kind of call. You know, we go into technical <laughs> details a little bit, uh, talk about the implementation details. Yes, exactly, Denny. Um, could you choose at the time of creation whether it's local or global or are those in separate places? Yeah, locality is basically, it's like, it's about where you manage the automation. It's not the type of automation, let's say. It's about where you manage the automation. Uh, with Probably with the automation, this is why Zapier is really big. It takes all these little automation snippets and workflows and brings them together in one, one, one place, right? So when you log in into the Zapier, your whole system is designed in there. In one screen, you can go through all those flows and, and, and manage them. So that's why it's really hot, Zapier and, and the similar services. Uh, but it also brings this downside, so as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier. So instead of choosing one over another, the best scenario would be to have both at the same time, an example. So I go to admin area, I create a new workflow. And again, this is, I think, good example. When a task is completed on a program, send them a congratulation message, okay? Simple, one, one action, one trigger, one action, no complex if, else, or deep uh, workflows. This, so this I have, listed in the admin area under the workflows or automation screen, right? So I, I have 10 programs and I went into program A and I said that in the program settings, uh, enable work this workflow in program A. So whenever a task gets completed in program A, this workflow is going to run, all right? And then I go into program B and I do the same for it too, but the rest of the programs do not have this workflow turned on for them, all right? So now we made it local. 
we turned off this turned on this automation workflow for these two programs on them when designing or configuring them, right? But it's also global because if I go to the automation designer or workflow designer in the admin area, I see this workflow listed there and it says, it's, it can say, hey, this workflow is used in two programs and he, here are them. Here's, here is the link, uh, here are the links to those two programs. So I can see that this workflow is in use in th those two programs. I can go to those programs directly from there. And then, and then I can disable or turn turn off them inside the program. So, or even in the uh, admin area, I can just hey, disable this program and disable this program. I can say maybe. So this is more like it. We, we don't have to choose one or the other, I believe. Uh, probably Emre, our head of product, can uh, do much better uh, design about this because you know he, he can... Uh, think more truly and uh, from user's perspective, I am more like looking at things from the developer's perspective. Uh, so you can do a much better job than me on this, but I think this is a, this would be a good start, I believe. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, James, thank you very much. You bet. Um, actually, James, from your idea, I think we have another hot topic, which is hiding blocks from your clients. This we also talked about on one of the previous uh, open product calls, if I remember correctly. But I think this is also a hot topic. Um, yeah, I think I, I brought up the hiding blocks. Um, in ah, uh, yeah, 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 you did right. Yes, in the in the previous yeah. uh, call. Yes, yes. Wow, you are very consistent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a squeaky wheel. I either get grease or I get changed. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, um, any more ideas? Denny, you look. You seem to have lots of ideas. The do you see my quiz note? What's the quiz note? Ha, huh? Has anyone talked about quiz ability? I have no idea what this would look like, but it would be a great tool for onboarding or for yes, exactly, exactly. I, actually, I think Emre mentioned that on yesterday's call like as a, as a part of onboarding your clients to the platform. Right now, you can uh, add your clients to your organization without sending them any messages, all right? So this way, this allows you to add them to programs without triggering any notifications to their email address or anything. You create, you can assign tasks to them and maybe assign uh, courses uh, to them and set it up uh, so that once you call them, oh, okay, it's ready, you can come in and send a message. And once they land on your program, it's all ready, right? With all tasks assigned to them and it's all prepped. So this is nice. Uh, this we already have, uh, but I think it was yeah, yesterday's call. Um, yeah, we talked about this, a custom onboarding flow where we will default, we will provide the default onboarding flow, uh, but you will be able to customize it. Yes, this is what this is something that we are talk, we are discussing internally. Uh, not like you create surveys. Surveys can be a custom app. Yes, surveys can be a custom app. A basic uh, survey will even maybe. Integrating with some third-party survey tools, what do you think about that? Do you use any survey uh, or quiz third-party tools? We can build a simple one, not like advanced, like the ones that's out there already. But you can create um, a simple question and answer thing. I can't know how it's called. Yeah, yeah. The, 
take your time. Um, yes, there are like there's many many of them out there, but um, we can we can have something very simple, just like you drag and drop some questions, several question types, a text box, multiple choice drop down, three or four type of uh, question types, and. Then this block, this custom block, can list these quizzes or uh, surveys for your client that you attached to your client, and she can click on it and then submit it, and they can see their progress. They can pause or resume if it's a long one or whatever, and then you would see the results in the program reporting. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the call, we are uh, working on the report extension, program report extension. So these custom apps uh, creating their own reports for all the all the members of the program. And Build of Life is the perfect candidate as a start. You will be able to see all the views of your all users and maybe compare them and, and see the progress over time, right? Because the, the value, the real value with Wheel of Life is that you do it in the beginning of your coaching program and then do it at the end of your coaching program and then you see the progress, how it gets improved, right? We can show it as a custom report on the uh, program report screens. Um, Lee has a message, host the services like Paperform can do this. With That's even awesome. We can uh, create a custom block that uh, uses the paper form or even we can publish a, uh, an article on our LearnOrg forum and knowledge base on how to use the paper form embed code with our HTML block because our HTML block already allows you to embed custom HTML code and personalize it with currently logged in users information. That's pretty cool actually. Maybe we can talk about it on the next call. I can show you pretty advanced cases, how to use the personalization tags inside the HTML block. We have some really advanced uh, blocks created with them and our, some of our users already utilizing it. Um, yeah, thank you, Lee, for sharing this paper form. But the developer side of me, to be honest, tells me that just go ahead and develop one really simple version of it, you know, like simple, very simple version of it and hack it together and then see where this takes us. But sometimes that they tell me they don't listen to that side. So we'll see. <laughs> um, I like your idea of a symbol wheel to start with then gather our input. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I like that too. All right. Um, the coach would have to assign their own values to answers. Exactly. And probably syncing those answers with the custom fields on the CRM panel, right? So you can, when you export your client's data, you also export those uh, custom fields. So you can use that information as well, maybe on your own reports. So many good ideas. Yeah. Um, wow, lots of notes. Um, Basic survey quiz builder. I think this is really great. And then hidden blocks reset, automation reset. Yes, we perform private notes. Private notes is also interesting. You know, you can, as a coach, you can take notes about your clients on the admin their profile page. And we are we will be spreading these notes all, all around the platform. Right now, for example, on the program report, last year report page, you only see the cards of these users, but we will be introducing not taking on that screen. So wherever you have the uh, user profiles, 
as a coach, you will be able to take notes exactly like that, like that place. So you can take notes everywhere about your clients, right? So maybe we can also introduce this new agenda block, uh, a hidden agenda block, which um, shows you your clients' notes so you can go through them on, on your calls. You can choose a client and then see uh, the notes for that client maybe. Yeah, yeah, especially this, uh, yes, Lee, um, I think this this is totally in line with your, what you're saying, uh, anything that adds CRM features to help us. Also, this is, uh, I, I haven't listed this on our roadmap for this uh, custom apps roadmap. Uh, we have it on our backlog, but not on our roadmap yet. Uh, these, so right now, these custom apps only introduce program blocks. You can only develop program blocks with these custom apps, but that's not it. The, the end goal is completely uh, different than that. So we want these custom uh, third-party developers to develop course blocks. We want, for example, why not have a quiz at the end of a lesson and don't allow a lesson to be completed until or unless they have the correct answer, right? Yes, and and not just course lesson blocks, also blocks for CRM profile page. Why not these apps introduce uh, custom data in the, in, into the uh, CRM page, right? Like uh, Wheel of Life showing the Wheel of Life of that customer on, the, on their own profile immediately, like their dashboard. So uh, yes, that's that's where we are going. And, and combined with these not taking everywhere, not taking notes uh, about your clients, I think uh, that's very exciting to be honest. <laughs> Could we schedule a time and I can show you what I have now regarding the notes? Uh, you mean how do you work with knots, Danny? That would be awesome. Even though you know scheduling time is a little bit different, but the worst case scenario we can do in an async way. Maybe you can share a loom with us, and then we can start from there. What do you think? Get in touch with us over the message bubble, and uh, the inside the app and. Let's take it from there, all right? It would be awesome. Emre will be super happy to see how you're doing things inside the platform. To be honest, yeah. Uh, user dashboard enhancements plus one, this sounds great. Yes, exactly. Yeah, awesome. Ah, on the another platform, that's even better. That's even better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, already too much excitement in in the uh, last thirty five minutes. So anything else? Any any other ideas that we can talk about? So. Hopefully, my, my goal is to show you some real progress on what we've been uh, doing instead of these plans or what we have achieved on the next few calls. And uh, that's, that's, that's my goal right now, and hopefully we will have it. And, um, and see what, what, what these topics that we talked on this call will bring us. Maybe a few surprises. I don't know. No promises. We'll see. Okay, then. So let's see where we are. It's It's been already 50 minutes. Awesome. So let's end the call on this if you have more to talk, more topics to talk or more ideas. Now then. All right. You you have Danny, you have more? No. All right. Yes.
All right, cool. So enjoy your, your day, evening, whenever it is. So see you in the next two weeks. Bye-bye.